Hello, I'm Dragos and in this video we're going to take a look of how you can deploy any Docker Compose application with your Docploy installation. For the ones that doesn't know, Docploy is a Varcel alternative that can help you self-host your applications like Next.js, Astro and uh, other applications including databases. In the past I already created a uh, video of how you can install Docploy. There are also other alternatives to Docploy like uh, Coolify or EasyPanel. But yeah, in this tutorial we are going to see how you can use Docploy to deploy any Docker Compose application easily. And uh, in here I have the installation with my uh, Docploy server. Again, if you don't have this installed, you can uh, check my previous video. I will add the link in the description so you can install it. So this is the interface. And in here I have a project created. You can create a new project for this. And this is a project with self-hosted uh, applications. And in here, for instance, you can see that I have some tests one. I have uh, other ones installed. And if you create a service, you have basically different options to create an application, to create a database, to create a compose application and uh, a template so for instance if you go to template you'll see that you already have some predefined templates in here that can help you host any application easily or the applications that are already in, in here easily just select it and it will uh, deploy it with docker compose for you but what happens if you don't have uh, the application in here that's why you need the docker compose to deploy this application so i will close this and I will hit the compose and in here I will give the application a name and we're going to install Flowwise. If you don't know Flowwise it's an uh, AI application that can help you build uh, chatbots easily and uh, the compose type it will be docker compose and I will hit create. Okay and right now Flowwise I, AI should be in here. So. If you open this, you will have the interface and in here you have all the details and in here you have the GitHub option so you can also deploy the current compose file from GitHub. You have also the row option that you can uh, deploy it like this. We are going to use row in our case and I already have an article created with all of these things in, uh, in there and let's go and uh, follow it. So yeah, the first thing that we should do is to be sure that we have our subdomain or domain pointing to the server IP address so we can uh, have the domain used. So let me go into the settings and fetch the IP address of this server. So this is the IP address. I'll go into the DNS records. I already have a Cloudflare domain with the don't link in here and I will create an A record for this. I will add a, a record. I'll not proceed right now. You can also do that if you want, if you have the full SSL certificate option in here. So I will put a flow, flow ESE in here and I will put the IP address. I will hit save. And right now we have our subdomain that it's pointing to our server IP address. And the next thing that we are going to to do is to create the docker compose file so i will copy this and we are going to create the application there and we are going to go through all of these details so i can explain what is happening so again i will go to the self-hosted application flowwise in here i have the general row and in here i will paste the docker compose file and right now if we're going to check this so you have the service for this and in here you have a postgres database that will gonna be used you have the network so basically to be able to utilize the traffic you need to add this into the deploy network like this that's why i did it and in here i have the environment variables for this postgres installation i have a volume flowwise db data that it's going to be used and here you have the restart unless stopped with some health check and yeah that was the database things and in here you have the flowwise and in here for flowwise again I will have the I will have the volume it will be a flowwise AI volume that we're going to use and in here I have some environment variables with the flowwise username the port and uh, in here you have the flowwise uh, DB that it's going to, to be used and the other things that you have you have the network in here that is the same and in here you have the labels. So basically in here you will have like two options to 
utilize the domain. One it will be to use directly the label in the Docker Compose file and the other one is to use the domain functionality in uh, Docploy. I will show you also that. So it depends uh, on you what you want to use. For this I will just going to use um, this and in here I will put the domain that I will go to use pidoze.link. So basically, basically these are the labels that will enable the Docploy to work with traffic. So in here you put the application name. So this needs to be a unique name. And in here you have the endpoint web security used in this case. Here you have the Let's Encrypt certificate. So it will use this resolver. And in here you have the port. Also I've created in the past of tutorials about uh, traffic. So I'll let also link in the description so you can check them to understand what all of these traffic things means in case you are not an expert. And in here I've added the volumes and the network. So yeah, like this you have the, the Docker Compose file set up and right now we just need to save it. Right now you see that this has been saved. The next thing that we are going to do is to add the environment variables and in here we have the environment variables tab and you can add the environment variable in here. So I've used some environment variables for the database user, password, port and things like that. I will copy them and in here I will just enable this and I will paste them in here and in here you can save them and right now if you do it like this no one will see them of course you need to change with your username and password. So all of these things to, to work. Again, I will hit the save. In here we have the monitoring. Right now it doesn't have any containers. In here we have the logs for the container. In here we have the deployment. When we're going to hit deployment, it will go and uh, deploy. And in here you have the domain options. So if you don't want to use the labels, you can go and add your domain in here and uh, Docploy will do this for you. So you just hit the add domain and in here you see that right now you don't have any service name but you just refresh this and right now you will see that you have the service name and you choose the flowwise because this is the application and in here you put your host the path it will be just like this and in here you put the port it will be 3000 and the other thing it is the https you can enable this and you do it like this you choose the lens encrypt and uh, this will uh, enable you to add the domain directly in the docplo ui so it's up to you how you want to configure this for this tutorial i will just let the the labels add it in there and right now we go again into the general and let's check again to be sure that everything is right in here and the other thing that uh, the Docploy team uh, tells in their documentation is to don't use any container name in here. So that's why I didn't use any container name in this area. I only let the default things, only the image and that's it. So I didn't edit any host name or any container name. So they say that it's causing problems with the logs. So yeah. This is uh, something that you need to take into consideration. But right now let's hit deploy because we are ready. The domain is pointing to, to this installation. The Docker Compose is done and right now you have the deployment in the deployment step and you can see that. And right now we're seeing that everything is created and the Docker Compose deployed everything and you can go even and check the logs and in here you have the containers so you see that they provided a name by themselves in there. Okay and right now we should have this working and uh, to check it let's go and copy the name with the domain so it will be flowwise with link. Right now you see that you have this installed and working. Uh, it should be prompt for a user password, but I already used this in the past. So new incognito window, let's see. Like this, you see that you need to put your user and password to access this. So easily like this, you can go and uh, use the Docker Compose with Docploy. Let's go and uh, check uh, also the other options if you want to deploy this thing with the domain so this is like a bonus of this video 
and uh, let's see if everything is working fine when you are trying to deploy uh, the same thing without the labels we're going to use the domain thing so what i will do i will clean up everything just uh, to see if everything is okay if you use the other domain option so right now i deleted that flow wise in here and i will create a service again i will use the compose i will use the flow flow easy like this okay let's go and uh, put our file in here again i will put the flow easy bit doze dot link and yeah i will just need to copy this because basically this will disappear so i will delete the labels from here okay so i will save it like this so right now we have the row thing environment variables i will create them after i set the domain so in here we have the options to add the domain and you can do that again you know, do it like this and in here you have the flow wise service and in here you have the host so you can uh, put the host id path it's like this the port is 3000 for this application i will enable https i'll do let's encrypt certificate i'll hit create so right now you have the domain added in here if you want to use directly the domain functionality with flow wise and next thing we are going to copy again the environment variables and let's go and paste them in here hit save so right now we should have everything set up we have the docker compose file without any labels and we should go and hit the deploy because we already have the domain in there i'll hit confirm and right now the deployment it started again it will go and start everything for us okay docker compose deployed all it's good again you can check the logs if you want in here this is the flow isdb it's up and running and right now let me open again a new incognito window and this should work okay it doesn't work let me check again in here sometimes these things uh, happen so that's why for instance right now it will be good to do a rebuild and uh, that's why some i prefer to use the other option to put the labels in here because i've seen that sometimes you need to do several rebuilds for this thing to to work right now if you're doing the preview file in here you see also that uh, you have a lot of things that are added if you're using the domain i guess this is a bug in there so you see in here that you have multiple things added if you're using the domain in uh, docploy so that's why i prefer to use the other option with label it's cleaner and easier to to use but right now we should have the deployment done again everything should be started and right now if, let's check this again we should have this working hopefully so yeah right now this is working but again you you seen that this is not uh, working all the time from from the start you need to hit uh, redeploy and when you do that you'll see that you will have other things that are added there in the in the labels they're doubled so yeah like uh, like this you are using uh, docploy to deploy any docker compose application i hope you enjoyed the video in case you like what you have seen please don't forget to like and subscribe